Hey, welcome back to the, uh, I guess, bot review series. This is the second notable game from regionals. Uh, if you remember from last video, we went uh, first place after going fourth and sixth. So after getting a first place, we're kind of like slightly ahead of middle of the pack. This is kind of a make or break game. If we go top four above, we maintain our spot and probably are looking at a good spot to advance to, to day three. But if we go bot four here, then we're kind of looking a little, uh, little sus. Might might get eliminated. So this game is pretty important, even though we just got win first last game. So let's see how this goes. I go tier. I think I've just preferred tier this entire patch I guess. Good for Oxlinger and Aesol, which were the two comps I was trying to play. Aesol with um, Riftwalkers, notably. And I think it's good for like real comps like Lulu and uh, I mean, yeah, just Lulu. I guess stuff like, I guess Ezreal as well. Here, I don't think anything notable. Not holding on to the Animas just because I don't really value Anima. Holding on to Blitz pair, Renekton pair, GP pair. Holding on to Kale for Underground. Just playing the pairs here. Alright, so it's 2 2 2 Augment here. Our items are Glove Tier Chain. So the only really slammable item we have here is. Hodge and maybe Val. Val's not the best slime in all scenarios, but it's a decent item. The main thing I'm looking for here, I have a GP2 Blitzcrank pair. Main thing is I'd be, I'd be looking to play here probably either number one is probably Oxlinger, number two probably Warwick, and number three just Tempo into like Riftwalkers. But for Oxlinger, the only Augment that's good here is Burning Spirit, but I'd obviously take it over anything. So first thing here we're looking for is Burning Spirit, and if you consider the Laser Core line, you might see something like, like this Yasuo be tempted to take it, but I actually don't think Spirit of the XL is that good in lasers. I think the, be the best laser augments are either a Blitzcrank augment earlier or uh or boxing lessons or just like the war augment itself i don't think spirit of exile is actually good i think the brawler augments augments are actually just straight up better boxing lessons helps you because like you're super tanky with all the laser drones and you don't really need benefit that much from attack speed so i'm not even that interested in spirit here and then the third comp i talked about was like rift walkers and i take either pike augment here your cut gives you a lot of free economy and it's really good with vow in particular which i have and small game hunter is straight up just like probably a free five streak, just because your entire team gets the bonus early game. Here I'm looking for anti augment, vi augment, pike augment, and that's none of them. So I just roll one more time. Mana tampering, cleansing, not worth it. I think maybe if I didn't have like, if I had like something else besides this tier, I might consider mana tampering. Like if I had bow, maybe. But I think I just roll again. Yeah, and, and then I see uh, I see your cuts, and then since I have the vow, I think it's an insta insta take. Vow, pike pretty much always cast twice and the way your cut works is every two casts he gets an extra roll so if, with Val, i basically have double trade sector already which is just completely nuts and here i just want to play the strongest board around the the guy which is gonna just gonna be two duels plus ox force for now so here i'm just looking to play riftwalker flex and i'm definitely just gonna hit the board naturally just because i have so many extra rolls when i say flex i mean flexing with like different carries like like, obviously, the standard is Jin Viego. I think Aesol's really good. I think Bella's really good. You can definitely be super flexible with this. But yeah, just keep it chill. Say so I get two reels that turn because I got two casts with the pike. Here, I'm just trying to make sure my pike is... Uh... The way pike works is that he he ults onto the furthest enemy away. So you always want pike on opposite side of the enemy carry. Just so you get the stun. Because it's really important to, like, land on the enemy carry. Not just because you stun at first, but you actually, like, stun it again. So it's actually worth, like, a double stun. If that makes sense. I think I'm just going to play four Duelist over Ox Force next level. So I'm considering selling the any pair in order to pre-level. Econ definitely matters with this Pike Augment just like a little bit less because you're like kind of guaranteed to hit your board. It definitely can grief your Econ early like rolling twice per turn. But if you can leverage that board strength into a win streak, it's completely fine. Items here, I have Glove. It's not very clear what I want here. Ideally, I'm just building more Pike items like maybe a Titans. I think I just take the Lust Whisper though. Try to play around Jin or Belveth. It's also a Vex in case I like maybe high roll a Jin on six or on five. I mean, here I'm just looking to sell for ten. Uh, holding the the Morgana Annie Vex is like tempting, but I just don't need it with all my force with all my dual upgrades. Also with Last Whisper Slam, Morgana becomes a lot less valuable. And yeah, you see the power like the power of two two rolls per turn is insane. Uh, I have this Morgana Ramus pair I can definitely play around. I, I'm more, much more interested in Ramus than Morgana here because I already have the Lust Whisper. But nice, we get the five streak here. Unfortunately, we don't get the double roll because it actually kills my Pike before somehow. It's all good. The spot is officially high roll enough for me to yap. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat past dish up. I said the spot is officially high roll enough for me to yap, and it, I mean that's true. I can pretty much AFK into a Riftwalker board and get like top three, but I definitely need to. Still focus up to be able to play for first. Just slam a TG here. It's kind of hard to use a glove and bow. So I don't level here. I could level for Ramus here. I don't level just because DQA has Sivir 2 and Ramus 2. Personally, and I guess Lucian 2 and Belveth as well. Like, that's not even worth... And, like, he also can level for Aesol. Aesol 1. He's sitting on 40 gold. I think he might level. And I just didn't think I could beat him with my board. Maybe I'm just crazy. I, I mean, I have a bunch of two-star duelists, but... 
I still have my Annie. Don't have Annie for the Fiora TF combo. I'm basically just leveling for a Ramus 1. I didn't think I could beat him if he leveled for uh, for Aesol. And also my money is like super, super important. Like making 30 here versus making not 30. So I just don't level. Unfortunately, I think this was a Ramus diff. If the Ramus like cast it on, on his back left, it definitely would have been. I think it's fine. And here, we, our options are Binary Airdrop, Verdant Veil, CB, Celestial Blessing. I think all these are pretty reasonable. I think Binary would be really, really good if I did not slam TG. But now since I slam TG, it's like, it feels kind of bad to go for Binary. Because two of my components aren't going to be contributing to Binary value at all. Verdant Veil is really, really good into like a lobby where a lot of people are playing like Garen. It's really good into Garen lobby. Like if like there's a couple of Infinity players and stuff. Good into like late game boards like Fiddle, Janna, Urgot, all that stuff. Um, and CB is really good when you have a lot of damage already. Which like, I mean, I kind of do. Like I think CB and Verdant Veil, like they're both probably fine. And I, I rolled this, but at the time and like even looking back at it, now i'm not sure what i wanted i mean okay i know what i wanted i wanted golden tickets or right or wise spending which i got but i feel like on average it might not be correct to roll here I, i'm not entirely sure the thing is like the combat prismatics are actually like not very good like standing united three it's whatever prep three is good but it's super super slow i could probably make prep three work here honestly with double trade sector but it is slow for sure any like tgs is pretty bad i don't have like duels plus one would be, would be terrible double tome is not that good i mean i don't know like like honestly i'm looking back at this now i think i might have I should have maybe just taken Verdant or CB, but sometimes you just get rewarded for your your, your blind faith. Yeah, I'm thinking to myself, I literally didn't know what I want. <laughs> I think I got the best two. Uh, I think wise spending is better than ticket here, just cause like I mean ticket like you get free procs off the pike, but I don't think it's worth it. Like wise spending, you just get so much extra XP. Assuming my pike casts twice, which he has been, um, this is basically just a bunch of extra free rolls and four XP per turn. It's, it's actually so insane this game. I use it hit the pike two. Rams 2 and then chill. And now, like, I'm in complete, like, play for first mode. I know this combo is, like, completely illegal, so I just want to maximize my chances of going first. A way I could do that is going for, like, a 3 star 4 cost. That's definitely something I was considering. Also, like, even just going for stuff like Rams 3, Vex 3 can be worth it in a spot like this. I'm definitely going to go for Pike 3. Like, to win the game, I was kind of thinking I need, I need 3 stars, but we'll see how it plays. Every single round, I'm just trying to position to keep my Pike on the opposite side. I miss here, but this guy's weak enough. Where it doesn't matter. Just constantly scouting around, making sure Pike is is on the correct side item here i probably want sword i'm not gonna get it it's on a warwick also uh, if you're like if you're super super sweaty the best time to scout is during uh the carousel because that's like what they like choose the position at the end of the round so like a lot of people will be little rats and do like these uh cringe positioning swaps i mean this is me included they'll do these like cringe positioning swaps like at the, at the start of the round so like you'll never know their true positioning but if you scout during carousel you get to see it but uh i mean that's probably like like way too fucking way too sweaty for <laughs> for most of you guys but I mean, that's what I'm doing. Okay, this is just me being indecisive. I th I think I 100% I should have just sent it to zero and to like level to eight. And I should have played, like obviously played Riftwalker here. But I, I at first at the start of the turn, I didn't think I was going to level. Uh, we can go back. I was thinking like I'm 30 gold. I mean, I'm like 40 gold. Okay, honestly, like thinking back, I like should have just instantly sent a level. But I, like, I don't know. I, I just didn't think. But yeah, I, I do think I get punished for this though. This guy is Nar, Nar 2 though, and like everything else too. And the thing is, Jin actually does not have that much single target. So it's not even clear that I beat this guy, but maybe. Yeah, just farming so much XP. Just always want to play for first. Here, let's see. So my board is Fjord 2, Yasuo 2, Ramus 2, Pike 2, Jin 1, Viego 1, Vex 1. I have Vex pair, 2 off Pike, but it's kind of hard to replace Fjord Yasuo 2, especially when it rolls this. Um, I'm looking to replace Fjord Yasuo with Alistar and Aesol, I think. Get the anti-heal down and get Mascot in, but I think I should have chilled for one turn here, maybe. Especially, like, uh, I mean, I should I should wait to see the TG, and, and then, like, once I see this, like, Bramble, Bramble Warmogs, I should just chill and not, not roll more. Because, like, I see this Alistar start to it i'm like and i'm looking at my board i'm like oh i don't even want to replace but i guess i just replace the also yeah and a problem with uh like rolling rolling deep on like the start of these turns is that i don't really spend much time scouting if i scouted this guy maybe i would have put my pike on the right side and it would have sent the asol more and maybe i could have won this fight's really close it definitely was a pike side diff but i'm not even on a win streak 82 hp like winning these rounds aren't that important I think okay, augments are second win, cyber shell, thrill of the hunt. Uh, I think thrill is okay, especially if you have like three item Viego, three item Jin. 
I think it can do good there. Cyber Shell is obviously good in an AD lobby, uh, but like I already know for a fact there's like at least three AP players. And I, I legitimately think Second Wind is like the best dog wind here. I think I would actually take Second Wind over Jeweled Lotus. And I know I think Jeweled Lotus is completely broken, but Second Wind, when I presumably am gonna go for Pike 3 or Ramus 3, and I also have the, the Rift Walker, like I, this comp has so much frontline, and Second Wind just pairs so well with it. Just because, like also Pike like resets aggro, who's almost always alive 10 seconds into the fight. And if the Second Wind procs on him, he also probably gets like more cast off which means maybe I get the third roll and if I get the third roll I get like two more xp so there's a lot of like internal synergy here just with having a, a stronger front line so I'm very very happy for second wind here put Leona over Vigo for a turn because I already have ox from Fiora I don't want to reroll the shroud either so I just keep the Fiora for one more turn definitely consider your TG rolls when considering strongest board because obviously like Viego's probably wants to be on my board over Fiora but I'm not going to get rid of a shroud Shroud is way too valuable. It mostly just comes up in like late game scenarios where like you might want to drop a trait bot, but they just roll like a, a broken TG. And you can't really drop it. Jin pair, buff left pair. Need to make some bench space. I choose to just sell. Okay, sell Morgana. But I get more bench space locks, so I, I sell the, the Leona. Leona's actually not very good in this comp, which is kind of weird. Like it's the legendary Renegade unit, and she also has Aegis, and you, you often play Aegis in this comp. But you can't you just can't really fit it. You already fit in three Renegade with Jin Jin Viego. And, and the Riftwalker, and you really don't want to play a, a fourth Renegade because they, they're just not very good. And like, Echo 2 is going to be better than Leona 1 most of the time. Hmm, I wanted Spark plus Sword, and I'm just taking another Rod. I was thinking I just wanted more Rods for Viego and Pike. I just rolled a level here. And here, I actually itemize Asol, which might look kind of weird, like, right, like you're playing, you're playing Renegade, you're playing Oxforce, you have Viego 2, you have an Asol 1. Why am I itemizing the, the Aesol? Personally, I just think Aesol is just a much better carry than Viego. Just because he's he's safe in the back line. I mean, that, that's basically just about it. Uh, Viego just dies like him very, very easily. Aesol can, can for sure do work. The only problem with Aesol right now is that he doesn't have a mana item. But the hope is I get one. I do have a remover. So, like, you can probably make a good argument that I should just uh, death cap the Viego right now. And look to remover it later. This is what I did. And I think it's fine. Also, one mistake I made this game was I kind of overvalued this Ramus 3. Uh, I spent a lot of gold on it. And I don't think I ever needed it. But for some reason, I, I got kind of caught in the... Uh, here, let's look at these items. I got kind of a... Uh, like, I I guess I just baited myself into thinking that like it was gonna pop off and I just needed three stars to, to win with the setup. But yeah, you know, I mean you'll see later. Items here, I believe I have a chain. Yeah, under my Ari. So I have cloak chain and whatever these items are. The main thing I wanted here was a tier item. So like I could go like Chalice Aesol here, which is good AP or it's good starting mana. I get AP buff to Vex, Aesol, and Viego. It's it's decent. But I don't have any MR shot on my team. I do a like a lot of magic damage. And my pike is gonna stay alive a long time if I give them spark. So I just go for that, especially because Pike will like jump to backline and it'll give MR Shred to like the backline where um where Aesol hits. So it's a little bit of synergy there. It's rainy weather, so I decided to drop just Echo 1 for Aegis to give my I'm basically giving my Aesol like an artificial tier item with the rainy Janna. Give it to Viego as well. I don't think it's worth giving to Pike, I'd rather just position him or Vex. But yeah, here is pretty straightforward. Just trying to get Pike opposite side. Slow roll to nine. I consider going for Jin here. Also, I'm, I'm this might look like overrolling and like I can definitely see this is this as overrolling, but the thing is I don't need any gold to go nine, and I'm sitting on Aesol pair, Echo pair. And both of those spike me a lot, and I'm on win streak. So I think it's actually completely fine to dig for these upgrades just so I can push streak. Get Zephyr here, but Pike's on the right side. And and here you see the strength of Spark Pike. Uh, maybe I'll slow this down this fight down a bit, just so you can see. This is basically like the perfect execution of like this is my team doing what I want my team to do perfectly. So Pike instantly goes to his carry, sparks on his carry. I sparked him for 145 damage at the start. Janna gives mana to Aesol. Aesol casts, Tia, uh, casts once on TF. TF has the spark on him. Pike casts again, stuns him again. And now he's low HP from all my AoE. My, my Janna hits him and then Jin targets lowest HP, so Okay, it died to the Janna, but it would have died to Jin if, if it if the Janna wasn't there. So like my whole team works together to assassinate his carry, and that's basically like just the perfect fight. It's kind of what you want to do with Jin all the time because Jin is actually like I mean you guys have probably played with Jin, <laughs> you know he's not actually the, like the best carry, but he does have really good targeting. 
if you can utilize it. He targets lowest HP. So if you can build a team that can like whittle down enemies HP, stuff like Pike, Viego, Asol, then he can like really shine by like killing t key targets. Here I get lucky, I fight Ghost. Um, I definitely don't beat the NAR player if I'm fighting Israel, just because he didn't put the third item on, but I'll take a free one. Here, there's only one damage item. I need a damage item, so I just take it. Garbrick is pretty good on Jen. Get the Asol too, so I'm down to just slow roll 10. I missed the pike stun against this guy, but I was on correct side for the other two matchups, so not really upset. Um, could I have won if I got pike on correct side? I I don't really think so. This guy's really really strong. Definitely have to go nine to beat him. And you can see here that like I would have had like Echo Seven <laughs> at this point, and Echo Two is much stronger than Ramus Two, but I'm just holding on to this Ramus Three Dream, and I mean spoiler alert, I didn't even like I didn't even go over Ramus this game. It just didn't work out. Also, this fight was completely tragic. I can go back. Uh, basically, the exact same thing happened against this guy that happened the first time, but my ASOL just decided to be a bot. And my ASOL missed every single ult on, on the TF. If ASOL hit the TF once, um, I would have won this fight. But, yeah. Sometimes you can position perfectly and then still get screwed by fight RNG. Uh, I just take Archangel for a soul item, and now I just go go nine by rolling. Still holding on to this to this gen. This is like a, a very very bad rain fart to have at this time. DQA has had a Morello Fiddlesticks two on his board the entire time, and when I quick scouted him, I thought his Mordekaiser two was a Fiddlesticks. So I positioned my entire team to get hit by his his Mordekaiser. Yeah, my entire team got hit by his Mordekaiser. I basically gave him a free round. Which is not good. And I, I'm, I'm trying to go for this Gen 3 win con, just because the other Gen player is low, and I think I could, like, I don't know, like, I, I'm thinking, like, way too in terms of three stars. I, I did not, I did not need them this game. I would have definitely had, like, two, two two star five costs at this point, and Echo 2 if I just didn't go for this Ramus or Gen. Okay, here is a really, really important transition turn, because I lost two rounds. I'm at verge of going bot four, by the way. It's probably the most important round in the game. I kind of, I mean, I definitely threw the last two. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I got way too comfortable with my spot. Here, I get the Mordekaiser too. So what I want to do is I want to play Mordekaiser over Asol and get Echo 2 over Ramus. I'm going to need to sell these Ramuses just so I can buy all the legendary. So I'm just going to give up on, on, Ramus, on Ramus 3. And I'm going to give Mordekaiser 2 the mana. So ideally, he casts super fast and kills this whole team. Sell the Mord, or sell the Asol, sorry. Get the Echo 2. And sell eight Ramesses, just so I could keep, uh, yeah. And here I just want to make sure I'm positioning. This guy's a Zephyr. I'm doing a roll down, so he's not going to expect me to swap last second. Swap the Mordekaiser, dodge the Zephyr. Pike on correct side as well. When people have stuff like Zephyr Shroud, they'll focus way too hard on landing those those things and not, uh, not on other things. Like, this is what I notice a lot. So you can often get people with, with stuff like Pike positioning and Mordekaiser positioning. If they're trying to like Zephyr Shroud cheese you. But basically just perfect positioning here with the Mordekaiser and the Pike. Just completely rail this guy. And yeah, good win. And now I just want to secure the win. So it's top two. Let's take a TG for my Urgot. Here? Um, I don't know if you noticed. Okay, I'm just rolling for, just rolling for five cost here. Uh, not really that important. Okay, Janet 2 is really good. Here... I don't know if I scout him. Okay, I'm 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 actually pretty bad. <laughs> but here, what I should be doing is I should not be popping the anvil yet because I should I should be threatening Blitzhook because his infinite team hex is in the corner, and he's playing vertical infinite team, so he has to put like some kind of valuable unit in this corner. If I pop the inv anvil and don't take the item, I'm threatening that I'm gonna pull his corner unit and like maybe he doesn't put a, a good unit there. Instead, I just take it just because I'm like <laughs> trying to position my Mordekaiser and stuff. But honestly, just because he's like, kind of force the position around the hexes. It's kind of a free one. I get the pike on their crack side. I get the Mordekaiser angle lined up. This fight should just be over. I move the GS to Mord because the only thing I care about is a Mord cast. And yeah, I just kill this whole team. I built some... I mean, I built a cleaver last was for Jen, but, uh, like, it didn't matter. Like, all that mattered that fight was just positioning. But yeah, I mean, this game, I definitely had a super, super high roll spot. But you saw at the end there, I was able to, like, utilize positioning to keep my win streak. How I, like, gave up on my original plan of three-starring everything in order so, like, I, I wouldn't die. <laughs> and, like, change plans up. You definitely, like... 
It's definitely fine to have like a game plan for a certain game, but you have to be able to adapt it based on what happens in your lobby. Like my plan for a while was like three star, three star Ramus and like a three star four cost. But when the time came, I just needed the gold to hit the legendaries and the legendaries were definitely enough. But like sometimes if someone has like some Exodia set up, legendaries won't be enough and you need to go for like three stars. But this game, that just wasn't the case. But yeah, after this win in a really, really good spot to move on to um, to day three, I think I'm pretty much guaranteed. I think as long as I don't go 8-8, eight, eight, <laughs> I'm guaranteed uh, not day three. I'm guaranteed day two if I go not 8-8 eight, eight in the next two games. So yeah, it's going to be it for me today. Yeah, feel free to like ask any questions or like like just feedbacks on just a lot of viewing in general would like to hear it yeah peace